Good morning. Good morning. Wow, it's good to see everybody here today in this second Sunday of Advent. I think we have a few announcements. People that had things they wanted to share with us today, um, you need to step forward. All right, here comes Julie with a mission announcement. Good morning. Um, just want to let you know the gift names out there, just a reminder that they're due back next week. And we had a lot of questions come up last week afterwards for those that, some of those that are new that have never done it before. Um, the items listed on those tags are just suggestions. You do not have to get all of them, just ideas, okay? And suggested limits $25. So if you want to go below or above that, that's up to you. And we do have a few more names. They have a new family that came in yesterday. So I'm going to try to get those names up this week if anyone is still interested in picking up some names. And if you've got questions, just see me afterwards. Thanks. Great. Christmas caroling. We want to hear about that. All right. Jenny's going to make the announcement. Um, on December 16th, we're going to go Christmas caroling at Northcrest. Um, it's at 6, and you can bring cookies if you want. One dozen at the most. And there's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board. And all the information is on there. You didn't get that. What sentence? You can. Oh, get ready to sing and visit with folks. <laughs> All right. Okay, that sounds great. Mark, you've got something to tell us about. As you can see, our tree is still a little bit bare. We have a lot of holes, and we've got a couple more weeks um, for you to bring in an ornament that's special for you to share here with your church family during the holiday season. So if you brought with you today an ornament, we would ask a couple of our senior high youth to come up during the first hymn, and we can bring those forward at that point, and they will put them on the tree for us. That'd Thank be great. You. Then, Mark, at the end of the season, they pick them up. And yes. Great. All right. Wonderful. Yes, another announcement for the women for the serve. Yeah, that's right. I just want to remind everybody that if you have anything outstanding for your serve order, I've got everything over in the gathering room, so see me after church. Great. What a great project that's been. I think you've raised over $600, haven't you, as a group? And that's the profit for our UMW that does mission work in so many ways. So wonderful, Shirley. I'm glad to hear about that. Also, the next two Sundays in the afternoon, and I'll give you a little bit of a heads up next Sunday, I'm going to head out into the neighborhoods around this church, and I'm going to begin inviting people to Christmas Eve services here at our church. 7 and 11 are the times of our two services. There'll be things that'll be a little bit different at each service, so some people may choose to come to both. Others will choose the one that fits the best. And I've got little door hangers that I'm going to invite any of you that want to join me in, in inviting the people that live around us, our friends and our family and people that we know, to uh, come to church that night. So... Uh, um, I'll let you know next week. It'll be in the afternoon after church sometime next week. So join me for that time. Any other announcements that we have that we want to hold up? Anything else? You have something. Okay, I don't know what this is, folks. Um, since I was in Disney for 10 days, I was in the and Julia. So oh, I'm going to go to their house on my birthday, I'm also going to ha have a bad time birthday because I'll have to go home to school. Oh, uh, oh, oh, that's the end. Well, yeah, that's the end. <laughs> I'll tell you what. This church belongs to everybody, and he knows that. And isn't that a wonderful thing? It's his. Let's take a moment. Let's greet our friends and neighbors.
Please stand with me for the call to worship. A voice cries out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Every valley will be filled and every mountain will be leveled. The rough and rocky ways will be smoothed. See the light from on high. The dawn is breaking. The Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. Amen. Now let's sing our first step. so encouraging to see so many ornaments and people walk up this morning and, and add to the tree. Even now, if it's not fully adorned, it's looking absolutely fantastic. So thank you so much for those who have brought in such beautiful ornaments and for those to come. Um, if you get a chance, you can come up and look at them and you can really see how some of those really truly have special meaning. It's really an incredible thing. Our opening prayer today, a um, couple things. First it has a group part and then it has a final part that I will finish. This is something we do a lot is we ask God for something and what's incredible with this prayer as we know this is the prayer that is answered for us. Let us pray. O oh Lord, darkness surrounds us until your light burst into our lives like a clear, bright dawn. We cover our eyes so we are unprepared for your coming. Your light blazes forth like a new day revealing all that it touches. Now we can stand before you, Lord. The road that we thought was straight is now exposed as a twisted, crooked path. Where can we turn? Who will guide us back to the way of peace, the way that leads to you? The Lord is merciful and forgiving a great and compassionate Savior. God rescues us from darkness and frees us from fear. Amen. I invite my young friends to come forward. Sit over this way. Let's sit over in this side. Over 
down here. So, Mark 1, 4, the New Revised Standard Version. John the Baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. We light this candle as a symbol of Christ the way. May the words sent from God through the prophets lead us to the way of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Thank you for lighting that for us. Okay, we talked a little about this last week. What is this thing up front here? Do you guys remember now what we call it? What do we call it, Adam? You forgot. Does anybody else remember what this is called? you remember? Advent. An Advent. What was that? Wreath. I heard it someplace. Yeah, there we go. All right, it's an Advent wreath. And so we, we lit a single candle last week, and now we're into our second candle. And if we listened a little bit to the words that were spoken, we we were reminded that Jesus is the way. But today I wanted, I had a couple things here I wanted to show you. Let me grab them over here. I think they're sitting right behind you. Does anybody know what this is? What is it? Yeah, it's a GPS. And this is the one that I use on my, on my van to kind of get around. And uh, I turned the voice off because it was driving me crazy. <laughs> Particularly when I go the wrong way. What does it say? Recalculate. And this is a guy that needs a lot of recalculating. <laughs> so I make a lot of wrong turns here still in the area. And so it asked me where I want to go. And I can tell it like I could tell it I wanted to come to the church here. And it would probably tell me I'm already here. But this is the one I use some of the time. Here's the one I use most of the time. Does anybody know what this is? What is this thing? Yeah, you guys know that really well, don't you? Let's see. Surrey, take me to the Community United Methodist Church in North Muskegon. See how she does. Okay, I'm about 39 feet off. To Community United Methodist Church. Let's see. Head southwest on Rodman Drive. I've got to head southwest. Let's see. Excuse me, guys. I've got to go about 39 feet. Let's see if I can do that. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. We've got a little bit of a problem, you guys. 39 feet that way puts me through the wall. <laughs> well, you, do you guys have any of these kinds of gadgets at your house? Yes. Or hopefully you keep them in your car, too, right? Like one of those? Well, today we're talking about something helping us find the way. Something, us, something that helps us find direction. Does anybody remember the statement I started with? that something is the way. Do you remember what that something was? It was a part of our reading. Not GPS, GPS is the way. No, it's a different statement than that. What was that? Yeah. Jesus is the way. This is our little Jesus out of our nativity set in back. And symbolically, Jesus hasn't really arrived yet because Christmas isn't here. And Christmas Day will be our reminder that 
that Jesus has come into a very dark place, into the struggles and the problems of our world, and that, that Jesus can show us the way. We've got all these wonderful technology things that will get us from point A to point B, but Jesus and his message will help us through some of the most difficult pathways of life. And we're going to talk more about that today, but I, I sure appreciate you coming up and helping me to kind of introduce it to the congregation. Let's pray together. God, we are grateful for, for the children of this church, for their sense that this place does belong to them. We ask you to continue to bless us through them. We pray this in your name, the name of your Son, the one who taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thanks for coming up.
This is a time for us to pray together, a time for us to share those concerns and joys that, that we brought with us. So we've got other people praying in the week ahead with us. What are the prayers we brought? Yes. Okay, we want to pray for Rachel, who's in the hospital. Who else do we pray for? Yes. Yeah. I asked prayers for Jake Hearns, and I got feedback from that. Once he got the word that we had said prayers for him, the week improved all week long. All right. Let's keep, continue to keep Jake in our prayers. Who else do we hold up? Yes. Okay, Chip, who has ongoing health problems, keep him in our prayers. Who else? Yes. Joseph Sykes, a friend of mine. Yes. What is, what is his first name again? Joseph. Joseph, that's right. We've been remembering Joseph for a while now. Let's keep him in our prayers. Did you have one too? Just pray for my brother Herman and his wife are moving today. So just pray for their, their um, driving from Florida to Tennessee. Okay, for your brother's move. So he moves quite a distance. Okay. Yes. Okay, for your... Is it your friend Deb? Friend Deb that's having surgery. Let's keep her in our prayers. Yes. That's right. People in the military. Let's keep them in our prayers. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Let's keep them in our prayers. This is an exciting time for them, so let's remember them. They are so sweet. About three weeks ago, before service, they said, can we get our picture up front with you and so uh, you may have seen us up here just for the service. They just wanted a family picture. I don't know if it's for a Christmas thing or what, but what, what a great group of people. Let's keep them in our thoughts as they come up to the Tuesday. Who else are we thinking about? Yes. Okay, a neighbor that's having surgery on the 17th. Yes. Okay, for Sally, who has cancer, let's remember her this week. Who else do we think about? Yes. I have bragging rights. Go for it. <laughs> okay. This is my beautiful half-daughter, half-baby daughter, and my granddaughter. <laughs> 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 Isn't it, isn't it so beautiful? We don't have to reach very far to find things we're thankful for, do we? <laughs> How sweet. I wish my grandma were here. <laughs> yes. For those among us who are not able to be in their homes anymore, Yes. Yeah, the prayer is for all those that can't be in their home right now because of a variety of reasons, are in care facilities and other places. Let's keep them in our prayers. Yes. And none of us have an excuse because she's over by the mall. And so while we're doing our Christmas shopping, we do our Christmas visiting, shouldn't we? That's right. That's right. Thank you. 
Yes. Absolutely. A lot of great prayers there and for Gary and Chris, the college kids, and, and others that are facing challenges. Yes. How sweet. Thank you. Yes. We have two friends. One, Sarah, who is fighting a type of blood cancer, so much to leukemia. And a second, Amy Hanslet, who is in the University of Michigan Hospital right now, um, a serious, almost stroke-like reaction to the medication. What was the second person's name? Ray Hanslet. Ray. Let's remember Sarah and Ray, both having medical challenges that are just significant. Let's keep them in our prayers. Thank you. Who else? Yes. He wrote a, quite a profound letter uh, that advisor did. I saw a copy of it. Let's keep everybody in this picture in our prayers. We keep him in our prayers, and we also remember those who have been a part of this larger story along the way. Many people, like yourselves, bearing a burden, and the, the family that was injured in the front end of it, carrying a burden. We want to keep everybody in our thoughts and prayers at this time. So thank you for reminding us at this critical juncture. Yes. Continue prayers for John's sister, Dan, who has ALS, and his friend who just passed a friend of mine, uh, Bob Jones, has just been diagnosed with Parkinson's. Oh, okay. Let's, Bob is a friend of mine as well. Let's keep Bob in our prayers and Jan in our prayers at this time. So, are very tough situations. Yes. Okay. For Jack, who's facing just a terrible infection, let's keep him in our prayers. Yes. Just another uh, Christmas spirit. In Elvira and I were over to another friend on Thursday, and the gentleman at the other table heard us talking about these luscious looking uh, buns, and uh, he said, Would you like one? Ah, oh, really kind neighbor. You know, this time of year when we do kind things, they, they're particularly noticed, aren't they? Thank you for sharing that. You know, there are God moments in all of our days if we'd only open our eyes and look for them. And then the hard part is if we open ourselves and create them. Uh, somebody else in their church may be saying thank you for something that's happened that we've initiated. So let's keep that in our prayers too. Any other prayers? You are quite a praying bunch today. I'll even shorten the sermon just for you. <laughs> yes? It's not a prayer, but last night there were a few of us Methodists that were at the Carol Playland. Yes. And I was sitting up with a whole lot of Lutherans. Well, good for you. <laughs> the, those Lutherans will help us if we just hang out with them. <laughs> That's great. It is a wonderful thing for us to pray together and for us to share so we know how to care for one another. But let's join together in our prayer song as we come together for this time.
O holy child of Bethlehem, descend on us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us. Precious Lord, it is a good thing for us to care for one another. It's a good thing for us to pray together and for us to, to build a sense of community. Lord, help us. As we hold up so many things that are so troubling in relation to the things that sometimes are wonderful joys, sometimes it feels like the darkness will overcome us. Continue, Lord, to be that, that light in the darkness. Continue, Lord, to show us the way. Lord, we, we thank you for those things which do enter into our lives and give us strength and courage to face the future unafraid. Draw us closer together. Help us to be your people. Lord, we pray for all the other churches of our community. We pray for those who are a part of this great symphony of, of love and care that you are conducting in this world. Hear our prayers, Lord, for those who are lonely, for those who are without. Hear our prayers, Lord, for those who are in places of war and places of disease and famine. Encourage us that we might find a way to live the words that we pray this day. Amen. Amen. Now let's stand for our second hymn, Love Has Come, 256, in the celebration hymnal. Really pay attention to the words of this. It's a beautiful poem. as our ushers come forward to receive our gifts today.
Lord, many generous hands have placed these gifts in these baskets, these plates, but those hands directed by generous hearts. In the midst of this time when we give, help us to remember that we are also blessed as we receive. In fact, it's your gift to us and our reception of that gift which will make all the difference in the world. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. This is about a message. Uh, We know messages. We have them several every day. We know famous messages throughout history. Paul Revere, messages like that. But there's nothing compared to this message. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she said, but she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to you, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Blessed is the word. Many years ago, there was a a serious coal mining accident in Allegheny Mountains, and Most of the miners escaped, but three men were trapped somewhere deep in the earth. No one knew if they were dead or alive. As the hours passed, intense heat and and noxious gases built up within the mine itself. After two days, before search teams were allowed to enter the mine, the reporters from the local News interviewed the three-man rescue team as they prepared to enter what might well turn out to be their grave. The reporter asked one of the men if he was aware of the noxious gases and the extreme danger of the mine. The man said, yes. The reporter asked, are you still going down? And the man replied, those men may still be alive. Without another word, he put on his gas mask and he climbed into the elevator and he descended the shaft.
are you still going down? I sometimes wonder if God posed that question before the incarnation, before God put on flesh and, and entered this world as one of us. Should I go down into that world where darkness reigns, where might makes right, where people value that which is temporary and ignore that which is eternal? Should I go down when I know that, that only a few will listen, when I know that even fewer will heed my message of peace and goodwill? Should I go down when I know that before it's through, I'll be despised and I'll be rejected and cruelly killed with no regard for who I really am? Should I go down? We'll never know if God really asked such a question. But if God did, we know the answer. It was yes. Absolutely yes. And the result of that yes is that you and I are in this place today, all of us here and people around the world gathering to worship. And the effect on humanity is absolutely beyond measure. As our readings for the season will remind us, light has shone in our darkness. We celebrate the light that has overcome the darkness. Perhaps some of you remember the name Ernie Pyle, um, by many considered the most famous of the war correspondents in the Second World War. He wrote a letter to a friend, and this is what he said. If you have any light, please shine it in my direction. God only knows that I've run out of light. When this little infant, this baby was born, in the little town of Bethlehem, God knew that the world had run out of light. An artist once painted a picture, kind of like the beautiful painting we have in the back, you know, one of the kind that uh, actually have a lot of darkness in them, uh, more so than the one that we have back here, but in the similar style. In this particular wintry scene, uh, the trees were heavily laden with snow. The scene was quite dreary, and the darkness kind of prevailed. It was kind of lonely and desolate in, in the midst of a, of a storm. And then, with this one last little stroke of the painter's brush, the artist put a yellow light in the window of the house in the picture. The effect was kind of magical. The entire scene was transformed into a vision of comfort and cheer because when you see that little place in the midst of the storm where there's comfort, where there's warmth and happiness, there's love and nurture, where perhaps one approaching that cabin would see hope. I think our world can be seen somewhat like that. Wouldn't you like to take the light of, of Christmas that that we know of in times that have been really great in our own lives, in our own families, in our own church. Take that light of Christmas and light up the world. That's the dream, I believe, of every man and woman and child and young person that bears the name of Jesus Christ. The light has shone into the darkness, and the darkness hasn't overcome it. Visitors to the far north tell us that a candle properly reflected can heat an igloo from below freezing to above 45 degrees Fahrenheit. And perhaps you know that we're wise and we're told that if we, if we know what we're doing in our car, in our glove compartment, we should carry what? A candle and some matches in case of an emergency situation that a tiny candle can be a lifesaver so it is that a tiny, itty-bitty baby offers hope to a world torn by violence and suffering. Should I go down? 
The answer was yes. And the most subtle of lights entered into our dark world. God has come down, and the least and the lowliest have been lifted up. Some of the finest Christmas celebrations this year won't be in the elegant mansions of Beverly Hills or in the seaside estates of Martha's Vineyard or in the posh apartments of Park Avenue. They'll be in the small, tiny hovels of Latin America. They'll be in the thatched hutches of Central Africa. They'll be in the bullet-battered mission houses of Afghanistan. They'll be in the slums of our inner cities like Chicago. Many of the depraved and outcast of this world identify in a special way with the Christ child who lay in a, a feeding trough for a bed attended by, by shepherds and donkeys and cattle. It's, it's inconceivable that we should ever shut anyone out. Everything about Jesus' birth affirms God's love for the least and the lowliest even that little town in which he was born. It wasn't Jerusalem. It wasn't Rome. He was born in Bethlehem, an inconsequential place, in a sense, in the middle of nowhere. And there were cattle, shepherds. There was a bed of straw. How absolutely astounding it would have been to that humble first family huddled in the crude stable if they fully understood that their child was to become as celebrated and yet as misunderstood as he is today. Should I go down? Yes. Because God came down, light has shone in our darkness. And the least and the lowliest have been lifted up. But one more thing. Because God has come down, we're offered another opportunity to experience God's grace in our lives. In its deepest meaning, this is absolutely what Christmas is all about. It, it's, it's an event. It's not simply a theory about life. It's not a theological kind of an idea or a statement or a, or a mystical insight. This is about an event, a an happening. Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea. God has come down, and in so doing, God has offered us a new opportunity to enter into the joy of God's kingdom, of God's reality. A woman tells about visiting a cathedral while a tourist, she stopped there at the cathedral. It was the holiday time. She saw the beautiful stained glass windows. A feeling of peace came over her. She hadn't felt that way since she was a kid. She had a deep yearning as she walked around that place and took it all in. She stooped down then before a Christmas scene. She studied the figure of, of Christ, and it was one of those figures where the baby Jesus is kind of like this with the arms outstretched. And she wished. She wished with all her heart that those arms were reaching out to her. She remembered Christmases of long ago when her family attended church together, the the nativity, the nativity scene then was uh, a lit one with colored lights, and pine boughs, and the scent just permeated her church. Afterwards, friends always invited her family to breakfast, and they'd return home to share the fun and laughter and, and then exchange gifts. They'd sip hot chocolate. They'd listen to the bells toll in the churches around their town. The peace, the love, and the warmth, it now seemed so very far away. Christmas was now lonely and cold for her. 
She hadn't gone to church in many years because of youthful rebellion. The, the pain and the bitterness of remembering kind of seared her heart. Tears kind of started running down her cheeks. And it was then that she felt a hand on her shoulder. It was a kindly pastor, and he looked down and he said, Welcome. And all she could say is, I'm so miserable. She told him the story of her broken life. She told him about her bitterness, about her loneliness, and and her fear of going back to church. He paused and he looked her straight in the eyes. And he simply said, the church is for people who are still suffering. Jesus has already forgiven you. Those words, they rang in her head and her heart even long after the pastor had gone. Slowly, she, she felt, felt this sense of the bitterness and the, and the fear slipping away. And somehow she knew that, that indeed those outstretched arms were a symbol of, of Christ really, really welcoming her. Should I go down? You and I know, we know the answer to that. For light has entered a dark world. The least and the lowliest are lifted up. And you and I, all of us, all people everywhere, have been offered a new chance to experience the grace of God. All these things can melt away. Our rebellion and our bitterness and our loneliness and our fear. That opportunity exists for all who open their hearts and let Christ be born anew in them. God has come down. Let us give God the honor and the glory and the praise forever and ever more. Let's open this church for all who have yet to hear that they're loved regardless of where they've been, regardless of where they are. Praise be to God. Amen. Will you stand and join me in our closing hymn, You Came Upon a Midnight Clear.
now may we go from this place in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go now in peace. Amen.